Hello, geometry students. Mr. Zazik back and better than ever with you here in Unit 4, Lesson 5, rolling along, talking about triangles and how we prove things in triangles. And we are going to talk today about two types of triangles called isosceles and equilateral triangles. And we're going to work on how do we... Um, look at those theorems, how do we prove them, how do we use that information um, in proofs and to find out things. So the first is we have this isosceles triangle and that is defined as a triangle with two congruent sides. So the congruent sides are called the legs. You'll look over here at this diagram and you'll see we've got the legs and the third side is called the base down here. And you notice that the two legs form the vertex angle. That's the one at the top where the two legs intersect. The other two angles are called base angles. And uh, the legs are congruent and the base angles are congruent. So sometimes we see that the, it's the angles opposite the congruent sides, um, which are congruent. So the isosceles triangle theorem says if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite those sides are congruent. Anytime we see a theorem, we want to think that this is going to be used as a reason. So in kind of our proofs, this is a reason that we could use. So um, if AC is congruent to BC, then angle A is congruent to angle B. All right. And we could also flip that around and say if angle A is congruent to angle B, then um, AC is congruent to uh, CB. So, and the reason would be if two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite those angles are also congruent. So remember, anytime you have a theorem, it's something that uh, has to be proved. And so this is the way you can prove that. Whoa, excuse me, I just stepped and lost my microphone there for a sec. Um, so, given isosceles triangle uh, XYZ with XY congruent to XZ, we want to prove that um, angle Y is congruent to angle Z. So, we write in our givens, and then it says... XB bisects angle um, YXZ as our given information. So in addition to that, angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. So um, therefore, we get that XB is congruent to XB by the reflexive property. And so triangle... The triangles are congruent by side angle side, and therefore by CPCTC, you get that, um, that reason. So there's a proof, and we can use it, all right? So then here's the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem. Converse just means switch it around. If two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite those angles are congruent. That's what we talked about uh, up at the top. And then here is a, kind of a bonus one. A little extension that we have. If a line bisects the vertex of an angle of an isosceles triangle, then the line is also the perpendicular bisector of the base. So let's look at the conditions. If the line bisects the vertex angle, sorry there, of an isosceles triangle, so you need both of those conditions, so we need it to be isosceles, we need it to bisect, then it will also be the perpendicular bisector of the base. Okay, so that's isosceles. As we turn the page, we're going to talk about equilateral. Well, equa, the prefix here, means equal. So equilateral means equal sides. So an equilateral triangle is a triangle with three congruent sides. So a corollary is a theorem that can be proved using another theorem, so it's related to that theorem, is if a triangle is equilateral, then the triangle is equiangular. 
if the triangle is equiangular, then the triangle is equilateral. Okay, so if we know all the sides are congruent, then we know all the angles are going to be congruent. All right, and um, just one uh, kind of note that all of those angles, all three angles, and an equilateral triangle uh, will equal 60 degrees. So if we take 180, we divide it by 3, we get 60. All right, so let's find the values of x and y. We're going to use um, kind of this uh, information here. All right, now... In this scenario right here, uh, for number one, what we want to look for is, what do we know? Okay, well, these two tick marks tell us this is isosceles, and so we know that the base angles are equal or are congruent. Well, now 115 is an exterior angle, but that forms a linear pair. So this means that, so this is going to be x. So 115 plus x has to equal 180. Okay, that's a linear pair. All right, so if we subtract 115 from 180, we find that x equals 65. Okay. And now that means those two base angles are 65, so 65, 65, and the triangle, the angles inside of a triangle have to add up to 180, the triangle angle sum theorem. So we get 130 plus y equals 180, so therefore y would be 50. So we found the two using the information that we knew there. All right, looking at number two, same kind of approach. What do we have going on? We've got an isosceles, okay? So isosceles triangle, what do we know? Okay, base angles are uh, congruent or are equal. So therefore, this is also going to be x. And so then we have a linear pair, x plus 135 equals 180. We subtract 135, and we get 45 degrees. So our two angles, 45, 45, all of them together have to add up to um, 180. Or the other way you can do it is the exterior angle theorem, just to kind of refresh your mind. This exterior angle has to equal the two remote interior angles. So another way to look at this would be that y plus 45 has to equal 135. So just giving you some variety there. So when you subtract 45 from that, you get 90. Okay, those are our two. All right, number three, moving on. Here we go. In uh, number three, notice the three tick marks. So this is an equilateral. So if it's equilateral, it's equiangular, and all of those angles are going to equal 60. So we know this angle is 60, this angle is 60, and this angle is 60. So if we're trying to find the variables, we could just set up a couple equations. x plus 5 equals 60, y minus 10 equals 60, subtract 5, whoops, x equals 55, add 10, y equals 70. All right. So we're just using the things that we know, kind of working on our ability to recognize and apply those things. And some of the stuff that we've known before, you know, some of these freebies, linear pairs, vertical angles, uh, those type of things. Always going back to that question, what do I know? Okay, so in this scenario, we want to find the measure of ACB. That would be this angle right here. So we want to recognize two congruent sides in this triangle. Let me highlight it for you just so we see. So this triangle is isosceles. Now because it's isosceles, what do we know? Well, we know base angles of an isosceles triangle are congruent. So this one and this one 
are going to be congruent to each other. Okay, what does that give us? That means then that the measure of angle DCA plus the measure of angle ACB would equal 180. Well, uh, DCA is going to be 45. So 45 plus the measure of angle ACB equals 180. So when we subtract 45, uh, whoops, wrote the wrong letters, um, measure of angle A, oh yeah, no, CB equals 135. All right. So there we go. And we could have found other angles there, but that was the one we needed to. All right, here, let's find the measure of DBC in question five. That's this angle up here. All right, now, if you notice that the large triangle is isosceles, then these base angles here and here are congruent. So that means this angle over here is 70. So therefore, the measure of angle DBC plus 90 plus 70 equals 180, because all of the ones in a triangle have to add up to 180. Okay, so um, that comes out to uh, 160. And so therefore, when we subtract 160 from 180, we get 20. <clears throat> all right. Find the measure of angle ABC, last one here. Okay, this is the angle up here we're trying to find. Well, we have an isosceles triangle down here, so the base angles are congruent. And then all the angles in a triangle add up to 180. So the measure of angle DCE plus 55 plus 55 equals 180. So the measure of angle DCE plus, uh, what is that, 110 equals 180. The measure of angle DCE equals 70. Okay. Now, what do we have going on here? Well, we've got vertical angles. So the measure of angle DCE equals the measure of angle ACB. All right, those are vertical. So this is 70 up here. Okay, so now how do we move from there? Well, in this triangle, they have to add up to 180. So what we do is 180 minus 70, and we're left with 110. The base angles have to be congruent. So we do 110 divided by 2 is 55. And so therefore, these up here would be 55. So the measure of angle ABC is 55. All right. Now, what we didn't do examples of is we didn't do examples of proofs. And in the assignments that you have, some of those are going to be proof things. So you have to utilize the theorems that are here. Those are going to be the reasons. So that'll be kind of the practice of putting that into place in your theorem things. Okay. So good luck. Let's ask and keep on asking uh, to gain understanding. Talk to you soon.